way for trimming the foot was to actually recenter your piece upside down on the wheel head. Okay? So, wheel head typically looks like this. You would visually eyeball center your clay like this. And then there's called this tap to center technique. You use your left hand and you tap the thing back into center. And I'll kind of see if I can do it. It's been years since I've tried to do this, okay? So, if it's not center, while it's spinning, you tap it. And actually, it's feeling pretty center. And the way that you know it's center is if it is center and you have a needle tool, you hold on to it with your left hand, kind of make sure that it doesn't fall off, and then you just come in and you make a mark. Okay? So wherever that mark is, it starts, it ends there, and it starts there. So I would push this that way just slightly, right about the center of where that mark is. And the idea is that if I do it just the right amount, eventually that mark's going to go all the way around the piece if the piece was truly center when I threw it in the first place. Okay, if it wasn't, then no matter how much I try to make this mark go all the way around the piece, it's not. Now you can see that it's much longer. It starts here now. And it ends right here. So it almost goes all the way around the piece. Now if that's the end mark, and this is the beginning mark right here. I just have to push just ever so gently right here to right here. Let's see if that makes it center. So now I'm going to take my tool and it's so close. It's so close. Okay, so this new mark ends right here. It starts right here. So I actually overdid it. I I overcompensated and I pushed it to the other side so it's off center on the other side now. So I just have to just a tiniest little bit you're moving it. Okay? And then kick it. And let's see if it goes all the way around this time. Close enough. Okay? So that's how you would center it. It would take a long time. Okay? That's, that's using a needle tool to center it. Some potters are good enough that they can just tap it. To center, they can tell where it's off center, and they tap it when it comes back, and then the part that's off center hits their hand. They tap it, tap it to center. Okay, you with me? Yeah. Where are your notes? I don't think so, because I'm going to say refer to your notes or have a partner, because I'm teaching you how to do it. You're going to have a partner, but you need to have notes too. Okay, because this is how you get it. Your partner might get it, but you need to get it, okay? Because once I show you, it's very, very frustrating to have students come up and go, I don't know what I do next. Well, you weren't paying attention when I showed you. You were goofing off. You were horse playing. That's not my responsibility. That's yours. Now what are you going to do? You go on YouTube and see if somebody else is teaching you how to do it? Because I'm teaching you right now. That's what this class is for, okay? So no more horse play. All right. So now you put this thing on here. This is called the dipping grip. Giffy Grip makes your life so much easier. It has two pieces, a bottom and a top, and it's already designed to fit on only these tall kick wheels. So you cannot use these on the short blue or green wheels over there. It's not designed for that. These little legs can be altered, but we're not going to do that because they already fit this wheel. So all you have to do is come to the wheel that it already is designed to use for. Okay? You push it down onto the wheel head. You'll notice that my splash guard is over there. There's no splash guard on it. Don't need a splash guard. And then I already have looked at my pot and it's a good half inch at least for thickness. So I kind of visually saw that. Now I need to find bars in here that are gonna match kind of the size of my piece. So I'm gonna get rid of all these other tools that are on here for a second. This, this is out of control. I'm gonna have like two of each of so you don't need 15 tools in here. Okay, then you need to find bars that are all the same height, all the same length, three of them. You're gonna, so I'm holding on to the bottom of this. Like I said, there's two pieces that are kind of sandwiched together. I hold on to the bottom and I rotate the top either clockwise or counterclockwise. 
okay? And counterclockwise makes these things spread out. Clockwise makes them kind of get close to each other. There are three padded heads that you put on top of the bars. There's a little hole that you match up with the bar and you put it right on there. Put this on here like this, and you put this here on like this. Okay, now, guys, this is going to require some responsibility. If you use these tools, please make sure that you take good care of them. If you were the last person to use these tools, make sure that you put them back where they go so that the next person that needs these has them. Um, it looks like one, two, three, four. Just trying to see if we still have the little bar for this. Did you say clockwise makes them spread out? Yes, clockwise makes them go in, excuse me. Clockwise makes them get tighter. Counterclockwise makes it spread out, okay? So notice that those arms are starting to get closer to the pot. And I'm keeping an eye on it. And whichever one touches first, I have to push it away from that one until all three of them start to kind of clamp down on the pot at the same time. And you just kind of keep adjusting until, and then it, they should move it too, but you're kind of have to physically move it yourself. And you don't want to really cinch down on it. You're going to crush your pot, okay? It's just supposed to kind of hold it there and hold it in place so that now it's center, and now I can actually use these tools to grind it and Unfortunately, as I'm telling you guys, you need to be real careful about taking good care of these poles. One of the smaller poles is missing. So we'll try our best to keep these, but it's going to take weeks to order these parts if they get missing. So just be real good about returning your parts. Yes? I was just showing you the old way. This is the new way. This is what, and I have two of these. There's a second Giffen grip right there by where the water, bo water bottles are. That's where you'll find them. So that there's two Giffen grips, two people can trim at any given time, okay? Now, you wanna make sure that you have one of these large trimming tools and then one of these smaller hoop tools. And when you look at them, you wanna make sure that they're in good order. If they've been used for a while, You'd think clay is nice and soft. It shouldn't do anything to these tools. It has sand in it and it grinds them down and they start to get really thin. And it's kind of hard to get anything level when you have a tool that's been worn down too much, okay? So I'm gonna get all these out of the way. I'm gonna make sure that I don't have anything on the wheel head because now I'm about to make a mess. There's gonna be all these shavings that come all over the place. It's not bad, but they do start to come all over the place, okay? So the very first thing that you do when you are trimming is you make the base nice and flat. So you take the big tool and you drag it from the center out to three o'clock. The, the wheel is still spinning counterclockwise like it always does. And I just kind of get it flat and smooth in case when you cut it off with the wire, the base wasn't smooth, okay? Then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut at a slight angle, about a 45 degree angle or so, okay? Just like that. Now I'm gonna trim off all those little marks that I made on the, on the outside edge here and there was kind of a fingerprint there as well that I wanted to get rid of. So I'm kind of just holding this tool against the outside to make sure that I got rid of any of those mars. Like when you try to slide, if you try to slide your piece off instead of picking it up and moving it over, then you might get a fingerprint on it. So I just got rid of all those marks that were on the outside that I did with my needle tool. It's nice and flat across the bottom and I have about a 45 degree angle, okay? So now I'm gonna switch. I'm gonna use a different tool. I'm gonna use this tool. Okay, and after I said that, sure enough, this guy is not great, so uh, it's not bad. It's not bad. When I'm looking at that one, it's not bad. So, okay, what you want to do here is 
I have that 45 degree angle. I'm gonna match up the bottom, this, this corner, which is the bottom corner. This is the top, this is the bottom. I'm gonna match it up with the end of this. There's two circles currently when you look at this. There's a circle that's the top circle, and then there's the circle that's the outer circle of that 45 degree angle that we've created, okay? I'm gonna match up this bottom edge with the bottom circle, and I'm simply going to turn the tool like this, and it's gonna cut a stair. Instead of a nice 45 degree angle, it's gonna have kind of a, a sharp cut instead of a 45 degree angle, okay? So I'm gonna start here, and actually I think I'm gonna uh, shift that, and instead of having my bottom edge lined up with the bottom circle, I'm gonna have the top edge with the top circle. Let's do it that way. So I'm gonna to start to turn my tool. It just seems like it's a little bit easier to go from top to bottom versus bottom to top. That's why I shifted for you guys. So I'm just turning that tool until it becomes perpendicular to the wheel head, which is perfectly 90 degrees. That's perpendicular, okay? So I just got a nice straight cut and it looks like a stair step here. You see that? I just got rid of some extra clay. All of this clay that you're seeing shaving off of here is extra clay, okay? Now I'm going to round that off and make it a smoother transition. So I'm just gonna take this tool, drag it, and start to turn it. Kind of round that off, make it nice and round. Then I'm gonna clean up the outside of the foot just by dragging my tool just a little bit. Notice where my elbows are. Tucked into my body so that I can keep my hands nice and kind of supported and kind of balanced, right? Okay, so now I have the outer edge, the outer circle of my foot is complete. Okay, now I need to do the inner circle. So this time I'm gonna take this the outside edge of this tool. I'm gonna to line it up with the outside of the foot and then I'm gonna slightly tip it just this way to make an inside circle mark. You'll see it here in just a second. Okay, so it's lined up. My left hand is just gliding over the bottom. I hold this along the edge and then I just slightly tip it and it makes a circle. I'm gonna stop it so you can see that circle. That's the inner circle to the foot that I was showing you before. The inside just made that inside circle there. Now I'm gonna to start to carve this stuff out from underneath the bowl. You don't wanna to carve too deep, because if you do, you carve all the way through, you no longer have a bowl, you have a planter. You can put plants in it because water will come through. They don't, the roots don't rot. That's why planters have holes, because you don't want your roots to rot, okay? So the very first thing I'm gonna do is now line the outside of, ed of my edge of my tool to that circle and I'm gonna to start to carve down. Just a little bit, probably about an eighth of an inch to three sixteenths of an inch, something like that. Now I'm gonna flip my tool. I was using the square edge. I'm using the round edge, round hoop tool. And I'm gonna to start to carve from the center, just a little bit, and work my way to the outer edge. And then you just periodically clean off your tool and I'm gonna do that maybe twice with the round hoop. Okay, it's good enough. Then the last time I do this, I'm gonna do it with the square one. And I'm just gonna try to get rid of any of those spirals that I've left behind. And just make sure that it's pretty smooth at the bottom there. Okay, then I have to do one last trim on the inside of the foot here to clean it, it up so it looks nice and clean. And one thing that I want you to notice when I do this inside carving is that it actually is taller in the center and that it, it so it kind of has a little bit of a mound to that inside shape. So it's taller here in the center and then it kind of rounds down as if like the inside shape is gonna be a little bit thicker right there against the edge, okay? So the last thing I do right now, the outside edge and the inside edge of this circle is really sharp. 
and I don't want it to like scratch my Formica countertops. I don't want it to scratch my table when I set it on the table. So now what I'm gonna do is take my finger and just drag my finger on the outside edge of that foot and then I'm gonna drag my finger on the inside edge of that foot to kind of just round it off a little bit so that it's gonna be nice and smooth to any surface that I put it on, it's not gonna scratch. Mom's gonna be okay with me using this cup at home, okay? All right, so that is basically trimming a foot 101. When you go to sign your piece, put your first and last name, the block and the year, you need to do it in here somewhere so that it doesn't scratch your Formica surface, okay? If you do it here, you've just made sharp edges and they're gonna scratch everything you put your, your piece on, okay? So, one thing I want you to notice is the shavings are really long and this pot is still very dark gray. If it's white, it's almost bone dry and it's gonna be too hard to trim the foot. You need to rehydrate it before you try. Okay, that's why I've been asking you guys to put newspaper underneath ears, wet newspaper, bag it, so that it stays hydrated. It needs to be leather hard to trim the foot. You should have long shavings. If you're having tiny little, like it's dust, it's turning to dust as you're shaving, your piece is too hard. You need to rehydrate it before you continue. Okay, that's the trick. I'm gonna do this when it's leather hard. Now, what you do to this, you can do whatever you want. 